Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm your host, Fabiola Lera. Today on the stream, we're joined by animator Chris Georginis, who's going to be sharing his animation process for illustrations using Adobe Animate. How are you doing today, Chris? Good, Fabiola. How are you? Amazing. I'm so excited for this. Now, before we get too. started, if you haven't already, join the Adobe Live community by subscribing to our YouTube channel and follow us over on Instagram at Adobe Live for the latest streams, updates, and more. Now, before I pass it off to you, Chris, let's take a look at who we have here in the chat. We've got Gareth, Bruce, Oliver. Everyone's excited for this stream. Now, Chris, kick things off. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and what we're getting up to today. All right. Cool. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I've been looking forward to this for so long. Um, and a huge, first of all, shout out to, uh, and a thanks to uh, Annika. I think she threw my hat in the ring for this a while Yay. ago. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you all for being here. This is kind of exciting. I see Myra, my good friend, and Nick and Uma. There's just too many to list. So anyway, about me, I come from a background where I learned art back in art school in the late 80s. I did not take any kind of animation course because they didn't even offer one at the time. We didn't have cell phones or the internet or social media at the time like we do now. So things were very different. The landscape was vastly different than it is now. So marketing yourself, branding yourself, learning things was not as easy. I got lucky uh, about several years outside after I graduated uh, art school, I landed a job actually doing animation. They hired me without having any animation background or even computer background. Um, and my first project was something for Steven Spielberg's new company at the time, which happened to be DreamWorks. We had never even heard of DreamWorks before. So that's how, how Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, for how, that's how long I've been doing this. And, <laughs> and that, and that within that company, we did, they were doing um, a show called Dr. Katz on Comedy Central. And then we ended up doing shows like, I don't know if some, it ran for several years on Cartoon Network, a show called Home Movies, among other lots of projects. But that's where I discovered Adobe products. That's where I discovered um, programs like Flash, which was owned by Macromedia at the time. And I discovered the whole world of Flash and how the internet was literally exploding with animated uh, content, interactive content. And I was just on the front lines of all that. I was attending conferences, speaking at Flash-based conferences and meeting um, people like uh, Greg and Evan Spiridellis, who turned into Jib Jab. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of Jib Jab, but they're huge and they've been around forever. Um, so I, I left the company and went on my own and started working for various companies like um, uh, advertising agencies, creative agencies, uh, websites. And then I was working for game companies and now I'm working actually for a company called Patient Discovery, doing building a platform for rare disease patients and I'm their visual storyteller. Um, this is my portfolio, as you can see here, uh, my Behance portfolio. There's a lot of various projects, different kinds of styles and looks, but most of it's vector-based. What I'm using now is still Flash, but it was rebranded a long time ago. And after Adobe bought it, it's called Adobe Animate. So that's what Thanks. I want to show. Yeah, that's what I want to show today. Um, you can see I'm, what I love doing is creating fun little looping animations a lot. I'll take I th I'll, I'll tell you this. The, the moment I discovered that you could bring an illustration to life was the biggest aha moment. It kind of gave me a career I otherwise wouldn't have. And so it's I'm hoping it's so fun. It's just so fun. And it just really delights you and the viewer, right? Exactly. It's so much more engaging. Um, so I'm a, I approach all this stuff from so almost a mechanical point of view, because I worked before I got that job, that very first job that, mm -hmm. that kind of propelled me into all this. I was a mechanic at a car dealership. I was doing lots of jobs like that, trying to find work. Um, and I little did I know that that would actually help me in my animation career, knowing how things work and move. You can actually become uh, a better animator. So having said that, what I want to do, I, I'm hoping that you know, this segment, we can show people out there that may be intimidated by the word animation, that it is approachable and to not be intimidated and that there are very basic um, techniques that I'm going to show you using animate that anyone can really do. But the way I apply them um, is a little bit different. So having said that, Ooh, I'm so excited to see how you're doing this. Everyone has such a different way that they animate even to get right. the same effect. So it's, I'm always so curious to see how people do it, especially someone who's been doing it for as long as you have. It's so, so fascinating. 
And a quick reminder to the chat, if you have any questions for Chris, drop them in the chat and I'll be sure that he gets to them while we're working here. So Chris, I see you have this Adobe Firefly window yes. up. Tell us, tell us what we're doing here. So I was one of the lucky ones to get um, into the beta. Thank you, John Knack. And so I started playing with it like everyone else. It's such an addicting um, application. It's great. So one of the, what I'm doing here is obviously I'm, I'm throwing in some keywords and I'm playing around with color and tone, lighting, composition, and I'm just generating images based on Firefly's um, AI engine. And so as you can see, as you, you know, put in different key for uh keywords anyone has out there has a special keyword to add to this um what about like a tabby it. cat like an orange tabby cat but anyone in the chat drop them in let's do that let's add that and see what happens um but so i started generating these images i otherwise would have never drawn it's not in my style um <laughs> and oh this one's adorable and so what's great is you can say show similar images okay based based on this image uh, let's see what happens. So you can see how there's a lot of similarity going on the here. The floating you, one is so cute. Isn't that great? <laughs> Maybe we'll play with that one right now. In fact, you know what? Let's do that. With its little paws, you can almost I'm, imagine it. It's view from underneath. It. Yeah, I'm downloading it. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to open it up in Photoshop right now. I had another Perfect. one queued up, but this one's going to work. Okay. This is your stream, Chris, so you don't have to take my <laughs> my enthusiasm. <laughs> no, this is good. Okay. So for me, I, I the next step, right, is to study the image and let's imagine mm -hmm. how it could move. We don't have to do anything crazy. This isn't Pixar level animation or Disney level animation for now. DreamWorks level animation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think for this, it might be fun just to see we'll separate these planets out from the background right and just have the cat sort of floating in space there might be a simple quick and easy way to share this you could share this as it is as a static image but if you add mm -hmm. just that little bit of motion so the first thing i'm going to do is just duplicate the layer just as sort of like creating a backup i'm going to okay. go to select and i'm going to say select the subject and Photoshop does a really good job of selecting the subject that I want. You can see how well it's done that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to hit Command J. And now I can turn off all these layers. You can see what we have already, right? We have yeah. pretty much everything almost already separated out. So, so I'm, I might further take this, do a Command X, and then paste it in place. It's going to throw it on its own layer. Let's do the same with this planet. Oh, wait, is that even a planet or is that part of his? It could be. Oh, no, I think that's a planet Up for debate. Yeah, I'm going to cut it out anyway. Oops, select that layer, cut it out, paste in place, throws it on a new layer. Go back to the original layer. Grab. Oops, hold on one second. I accidentally fat fingered the little right click button on my <laughs> stylus and paste in place. So now I have everything on its own layer. And if we want, we would need a background, right? And now right. the original background is kind of dull. So what True. I might do, let's go back to Firefly, right? And let's, let's take all of these out, clear the style, and let's just type in keywords for space, maybe galaxy. Let's create, let's have Firefly um, create a background for us. Uh, Space, galaxy, colors, maybe universe. That might be a good keyword. Yeah. Um, maybe some checking. purple to contrast with the orange. Does it? Love that. Might, might pick that up. And let's go here. Maybe we'll do dramatic lighting. Uh, composition. Maybe we'll choose wide angle. Color and tone. Um, vibrant. And let's see what that gives us. So exciting to see what what it's gonna generate. Oh, look at that! Yes, that's where we want our little cat. That's where he's got to live. So, which one, you guys? A, B, C, or D? Which one, you guys? Let's decide. see what the chat has to say. So Myra said, "Try Nebula." That would have been a good word too. But we can still do that. Let's download let's one of these just one of them. for now, and let's add Nebula. Thank you, Myra. Let's see. Drum roll. How this changes, this changes everything. Wow. Okay. Yes, that looks amazing. Thank you, Myra. 
That was such a keyword, literally. Yes. Um, I mean, any of these would work, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with this one. Okay, so now let me, it's over here on my other monitor. I am going to open it up in Photoshop and I'm going to copy it. Let's go back to this one and let's paste it in. Okay, okay. so there's our background. The cat looks Perfect. great. Actually, what I want to do now is give a little more room to the cat. Let's scale it down a little bit just to give it more room to move. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm picturing once we get into animate, just something very simple like this. And then the next example I'll show you will get a little bit more complicated. Um, so let's save this. Let's go Adobe Live. I'm going to go to my Firefly folder. They organized here. I yep. can sense it. And I, I haven't named any layers. I haven't named any layers, but that's okay. We're not going to name layers. We'll today excuse for this. you. Well, thank Don't you. worry. Thank you. This is a, a friendly stream. Definitely. Okay. I've always noticed animators are very tidy because of all the different layers you have when you're actually building things. <laughs> it becomes right. part of the whole process. But this one's pretty simple. So, all right. Tell me what you're doing here. Are you importing that whole PSD? I am. I am importing the entire PSD. Let me figure out where I put it because that would be a good thing to know. I don't see it. Hold on. Let me make it's sure. Around. Oh, I didn't I didn't fully save it. There was another pop up. OK, let me oh, go back to animate. Cancel on accident, I'm sure. No, there's actually a separate um, pop up to uh, confirm something. I forget what it said. So here it is. And so now I'm in animate. I've imported the PSD and there's this cool little PSD Photoshop importer wizard. Um, and I have so many options. You can see all the layers that I had created inside mm -hmm. of Photoshop, which are great. These are the planets, the original. We don't need these layers. Those are the original ones. Here's our new nebula uh, background. Um, I want to select bitmap images with editable layer styles, which is going to be good. Let's go lossless, convert layers to animate layers as opposed to us all in one layer or different keyframes, which are an option if that's what you want. And I'm going to set the stage size to the same as the Photoshop canvas and just click import. And now you'll notice we are in animate. We have a timeline. We have all our assets and they're all on separate yes. layers. Right. Isn't that great? Yeah. Uh, very tidy. It's like a reflection of what we were doing over in Photoshop. It's the exact mirror thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So the next step is, all right, how do we animate it? We don't need to animate the background. So we're just going to lock that layer. Let's extend out our timeline. I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard, but th there's other options. There's so many ways. There's, there's going to be a really bad pun here, but there's so many ways to skin a cat and animate. <laughs> and I just extended out the timeline a bunch of frames. It's now at 50, okay. whatever, eight frames. It doesn't matter how long it is right now. We can adjust that later, depending on how we want this to loop. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select the cat. Let's hit F8. Now, the big building block inside of animate are what's called symbols. Now you'll notice I'm going to call this cat. I'll explain this as we go along and I'll take, I'll, I'll use symbols um, in greater ways coming up in the next example. So okay. basically what this does is it creates an, a library asset and I could actually populate this document with as many as I want, but we only need one for now. Okay. For now. So, there could now. be more out there floating in, in the nebula. <laughs> there could be. <laughs> so what we're going to do is create a looping animation. And I think what I want to do is I might do it what's called nested inside of this graphic symbol. And I'll explain why in a second. Did you just double click that to, to go right oh, into yeah, it? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you for pointing that out. I do things without thinking of them uh, or thinking of the person who's not sure what I'm doing. So, yes, this is a graphic symbol. I can double okay. click it. And now I'm in edit in place mode for that symbol. I'm inside the graphic symbol. You'll see there's actually another timeline here with just one frame. Mm -hmm. We're inside a cat. This is like our breadcrumb trail up here in the top left. We can switch back to the main scene or Got double it. click. And now we're inside of that cat symbol that we created. And I'm going to extend this out. So uh, let's say this whole thing is, I don't know, maybe 50 frames long. I am going to actually hold on one second before I do that. This is still just the just the bitmap. I am going to uh, I'm going to tween this. I'm going to apply a motion tween to this, which can only be done to actual symbols. So I'm going to convert the cat to a symbol again. Give it a different name. Even though we're inside a symbol, you can have I can spell too. I promise I know you how can to have spell. a symbol inside of a symbol. 
Correct. So okay. we can have different layers of animations, literally layering animations within each other. And you could have as many symbols inside of symbols and inside of symbols as you want or as you need. So the reason I did this, I'm going to go to whatever frame 50. Let's make it two seconds long. I'm going to hit F6, which creates another keyframe. In fact, okay. you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring the first cat down a little bit and then the same amount here. And then I'm going to go midway and create another keyframe. And this is where we're going to move the cat up a little bit. And how are you creating those keyframes? Just by moving the cat? No. It does, well, you can set the timeline to auto keyframe, but I don't have that. I'm hitting F6 on the keyboard, but Got there's it. also a shortcut here in the timeline panel. There's also, I just created a second keyframe by accident, but there's also insert timeline keyframe. There's, like I said, so many ways to skin the cat, right? Mm -hmm. So I my habit is F5, F, F6, F7, F8. Those are like the most used keyboard shortcut commands inside of Animate for me. Perfect. So. Yeah, F6 keyframe, F7 is a blank keyframe that actually removes the contents of that layer, but we don't want that. Okay. But now we have our keyframe set up. We have the cat down here. It matches the same thing in the last keyframe. I kind of like bookended this timeline mm -hmm. and then the change is here. So if I click anywhere and across these, at least across the center keyframe, you can see here, and I create this highlighted region. Mm -hmm. I'm going to right click anywhere over that highlighted blue, and I'm going to say create a classic tween. There's actually even a button up here to do the same thing in the timeline. So now when I play this back, you'll see the cat is moving up and down. I am going mm -hmm. to actually go to control and set a global parameter to loop the playback of my entire document. So now we have a floating cat, but it looks really robotic. It looks stiff because the interpolation across all right. these frames is equal for every frame, right? So what we want to do is... It doesn't look affected by the forces of non-gravity, non I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what I'm going to do is with this tween selected, I'm creating mm -hmm. a span across all these keyframes, or at least these two uh, halves of the animation. In the properties panel, the properties panel will update, right? We have tweening. We have an effect here. It's called classic ease. If we click inside here on cla classic ease, it brings up this panel. And we can say, oh, we have ease in, we have ease out, we have ease in and out. Um, so what I'm going to do is do it ease in and out. We have different curves, but I okay. think quad is fine. And if that's the one we like, we just double click it. Now, when we play it back, it just softens that motion. It's really simple. At the simple. top and at the bottom. Yeah, and, it, and it's doing it from this keyframe to this keyframe, and then from this keyframe to this keyframe, because I selected across both spans of this motion tween. And we have an amazing question here from Anika. The question is, do you favor classic tween or motion tween? I favor classic, and it's a great question. It's a complicated answer, but mainly, uh, motion, so if you're going to remember one thing about the difference between tweens is that classic tweens are frame-based and motion tweens are object-based. And what that means is classic tweens, we can still go in and create keyframes and alter any nested animations inside and they'll always remain in sync with this timeline. Motion tweens are more global. You can either set them to play once or loop, but you can't control them uh, any with any more detail than that. It's okay. uh, it's just a different animal and there's different applications for both, but mostly classic animators who need all their timelines to be in sync with each other tend to use classic tweens. In fact, the reason why classic and motion exists is because we used to have only one tween model uh, back in the day. And then they introduced a different model of tweening which broke animators workflows to the point where we couldn't use this program anymore. We couldn't do lip syncing. We couldn't control eyes blinking and things like that. Um, so they couldn't get the new model, which is now called motion tweens to work for animators classically. So they decided to keep both two different models. Have, of everyone tweening. can, can choose how they want to work. Exactly. But it does get confusing when you're trying to teach it, you yeah. know? So now out on the main timeline, right? This is our nested animation. Here's what's cool about a graphic symbol. I can tell it to stop, right? I, I can select the instance and in properties, I have a looping option. I, it's set to loop, or I can have it set to play once, or I can have it set to stop. I can even create a keyframe 
somewhere here and set it to stop. I have a frame picker that shows me all the frames that are nested within. They all look yeah. the same, right? Yeah. There's, there's so many, this is a bad example to show the frame picker with, but I can click here and say, you know what, stop, but I want you to stop on frame 29. So it'll do this weird little glitchy jump, but just to show you like graphic symbols, why we use them instead of movie clip symbols, it's another uh, sort of legacy feature of, of Animate. So right now he's not doing anything. What happened to our animation? Well, if I click here, I had set it to single frame. I wanna go back to loop and there he is. Perfect. All right, so there's our, our looping little cat. Our looping well, tabby cat in all its glory. So let's do something a little bit more fun. Robust. I guess Robust. That is a great and word. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Again, last week I was doing more Firefly experiments. Um, so this character popped up. Firefly generated this great character. And I started looking at it thinking, oh, I can totally pull off animating this character in a way that is a lot more engaging. So the reason, so well, a lot, so all right. Animating, the way I animate, I'd say 90, maybe 85 to 90% of it is prep. Um, I'll spend most of the time in Photoshop prepping it. It's not unlike painting a house, right? The more time up front you spend scraping, sanding, priming, the faster and easier and better looking that final coat goes on. So 85% of the time it's prepping it in Photoshop and then bring it into animate and start having fun animating it. So I'm gonna show you how I think about and approach separating this character. First, I'm going to hit J, but I'm gonna just sort of uh, introduce a couple of technical, well, not even technical. It's really just copying and selecting and then painting over. What I wanna do is separate each of her facial features, including her head from her neck, her eyes from her face, eyebrows, lips, nose, ears, all that, the hair, into different layers like we did with the cat, but obviously it's gonna be a little bit more complicated uh, so that I have freedom to animate everything individually. So that said, I'll start by just loosely grabbing, let's say, the eyebrow and I'll do a paste in place. Let's turn off a few things. So you can see how this is okay. happening, right? I start doing a lot of this stuff. Basically isolating all those elements that you eventually want to animate. Exactly. And I'll go in and I'll either use a lasso tool if I feel like my hand is steady enough, but the amount of strong coffee I've had this morning, it may not be. Ooh, wow. That's that was impressive. Not, that was that was a very rare thing. That, you're showing off for the stream. Well, I'm on a pen display too, <laughs> so I have no excuse. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> for those curious what you're using, I feel like that's a common, common question always. Oh yeah, I love pen displays. Um, I'm, I am anticipating a very new one from a company called Sense Labs. Uh, they just came out with a pen display that I actually helped test. So I've used it um, for about a month. Uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago when they were initially testing everything. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a great display. I, I've used Wacom's in the past. This one I'm on right now is uh, from a company called XP Pen. And it works really well. They're really affordable. That's um, great. And it works really well. It's great. Can I ask you why you're turning it? Is it just to to cut out yep. more steadily? Okay. Yeah. I, um, I, I don't know if there was something else going on there. <laughs> it's to avoid, like, you know how sometimes when you're drawing, you just have a comfortable way of creating certain lines and yeah, shapes? Yeah, yeah. That's really it. I am not, I don't want to contort myself and, you know. Uh, Makes it, sense. It, yeah, that, I do this a lot. I, I use the R tool, our keyboard shortcut a lot. All right. So we got this going. And we have her two eyebrows, right? Mm -hmm. And so go back to this. Let's the eye. So the eye was probably the most interesting part about this because I wanted to have her pupils be independent from the eye itself. So All easy right. enough to let's select that layer. Let's go in here. And I am going to roughly grab her pupil. It doesn't matter if I'm not perfect at this point. I'm going to just hit Command J, pops mm -hmm. it onto a new layer. I'm going to go back to this. I want to say, you know what? I'm going to, I could do one of two things. Once I in animate, I could just create a mask in this shape and have the pupil inside it. Or 
I could just literally separate three, all three of these objects, the pupil, the whites of her eyes, and the actual eye, and just to have them layered in a way so that the pupil is sandwiched in between them all. And that is just the easiest way. Sometimes working with masks is tricky because you have to turn them on and off to see what's actually happening. And I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit more analog than that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to now grab this. And the other interesting issue that gets created as a result of this is you end up creating holes in her face, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried about that right now. I'm really only worried about what her eye is going to look like. Okay. So, let's, so we want, this is going to be the white of her eye. So I'm just going to go in, grab that white. I'm just going to do traditional painting, right? I'm just going to paint this in. I don't need pressure sensitivity. I'm just going to paint this in really quick. I'm just going to do one eye. Because you don't want that information on this layer. I want to just overlap. Exactly. I don't want that information on this layer. I want to even overlap um, the eyeball a little bit, just so that these pixels aren't like right up against each other. And it might cause a little yeah. bit of a gap. But mm -hmm. I could also, you know what, could be even smarter than this and just scale the whole thing a little bit more. And if we want to test and see what that'll sort of look like, let's bring this eye the actual art of the eye around her pupil and the white of her eye on the layer above, because that's where it would eventually have to be. Okay, so then this is going to be, sorry, this might be visually confusing, but we have the pupil, we have the white of her eye, and we have the eye itself. This needs to be a hole. So let's just cut that out. And I might go in and clean it up with the eraser tool. And what's purple right now is basically transparent, just in case anyone yes. hasn't thank you for that. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Sometimes I will just have a layer down here with a really saturated, contrasty color, just it helps me see. Sometimes it's hard to see yeah. if there's a white pixel somewhere. Right. That, that's all I'm doing. That's a helpful little tip, I think. When you're first starting out, you want to leave everything transparent, but then it's easy to not catch yeah, these, after you've imported it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after I've imported it, you see these little artifacts and you're like, oh, darn. I messed up. <laughs> All right. So again, we have this. Actually, what I'll probably end up doing uh, again with maybe I'll do it with the lasso tool is just clean up the edges, right? I don't know what that mm -hmm. yellow stuff is, but I like it. Um, and let's just do this. And of course, if I was really doing this for, I don't know, a client or something like that, I would just, I would definitely spend more time doing it. But now, we have the white of the eye. Let's actually take that down a little bit. I'm just selecting layers, cleaning it up. And here we can actually, inside the pupil layer, I can actually get a feel for how it might work once right. I'm in animate. We could probably even clean up this eye just a little bit more. But it looked pretty good. Like it looked like it, it would work yeah, right, exactly. Ultimately. Proof of concept is yeah. probably going to work. Okay. Now, the next thing I'll show you is, let's say, what I ended up doing, because right now, if we start moving around the eye mm -hmm. and other features, we're going to start exposing areas behind it that aren't finished, don't exist right. paint-wise, right? So what I like, what you need to do at some point is go in here and finish painting and now you could maybe even use content to wear we could even try that but let me hide those eyebrows i might try that because sometimes it works really well Got it. Con okay con content to wear is shift f5 to now fill in just... those purple areas wow yeah. like we got lucky how crazy yeah. was that that, that saves looks awesome it looked pretty good and so let's just see what happens here shift f5 keep your fingers crossed cool this was the I white of the eye worked. yeah like woo that's yeah, because amazing. it's not going to be visible like 100%, so it's not like exactly. you need to have the accurate shadows necessarily. Correct. And here's the nose. This was a pretty easy one. Let's cut it, paste it in place, and now it's in a new layer. And while we're here, let's go back and just hit content aware one more time. Oh, I'm in the wrong layer. Yes, I know. Thank you. There we go. So 
Now, that's great. That's like the definition of working smarter, not harder, right? Like, yeah, because you would think that filling in what what you're missing would be that could potentially be hours of work if you were going to nitpick it. Exactly. Exactly. So this was how I spent, like, I'd say the first hour, hour and 15 minutes. What I did was I have I'm like on a baking show and I'm pulling the oven out of the the pulling the pie out of the oven already right. sort of cooked, right? So I have separated. <laughs> <laughs> I have the I retain the watermark because it's the right okay. thing to do. We're in beta right now with Firefly. Yeah. Here's her hair. I separated it. I just did a loose coloring in of the back of her hair, even though you don't see it. Here's the shoulders. Okay. That's I'm not really gonna move them. Um, and let's do here's her ear. I even mm-hmm. separated her earrings from her ear. And here's the And other basically ear. you want to separate everything that you're planning on moving. Correct. That's really it. That's the hardest part. This is the Deciding sanding that, and scraping yeah. of the house before you start painting. Um so yeah, these are all the different layers. So now the fun part begins. Nice. There's the nose. There was actually a shadow. Let me show you. There's a shadow on her lip and this was sort of an mm-hmm. executive decision to reproduce that in animate i felt like that would be easier because if i'm moving her mouth a little bit it might be hard if the shadows baked into her face so i figured right. i'll use a gradient you'll see i'll recreate it so let's actually delete actually i'm going to leave these as is just hide them and okay. let's hit save i'm going to go into animate and let's recreate that animation I'm going to click new, new document. Um, here you have like so many options for document types. Mm-hmm. Character animation is fine. I'm just for now, it's going to end up being the same um, artboard or art size uh, as the Photoshop file. 24 okay. frames per second is probably fine. I might actually jump that up to 30 or something like this. And, and oh, why do you make those choices just for, for those at home? Yes, 24 frames per second is usually the standard for animation, mostly character animation. Um, But 30, I'll sometimes do if it's motion graphics based because it's a little bit smoother if I want faster graphics, that type of thing. Uh, But straight up, either frame by frame, um, I'll usually use 24. Okay. That's that's really a personal preference. There's no real hard, fast rule to it. But video is, a lot of the content I put out is for video. So a lot of times it's 30 frames per second. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you're okay. just tuning in here with us on Adobe Live, we're here with Chris Georginis. He is animating this amazing Firefly character in Adobe Animate and showing us exactly how to put it together. I can't wait to see this. We're just now moving it from Photoshop to Animate. Yes. All right. We don't need that. I'm just making sure we have the right layers in all of them. Animate perfect. layers. Perfect. We want, uh, let's see. Yep make the stage size the same and I think that is all we need I don't know why I don't have the option for some reason for making it a certain way but that's fine let's import it we're gonna be fine okay so now here we have everything we need so again before I was talking about layering animations I'm gonna do that with the head I'm gonna layer animations to kind of produce this not 2d looking animation and not 3d it's commonly referred to as two and a half d somewhere in between so interesting okay yeah it's kind of fun so i'm going to lock the layer that is just that background Mm -hmm. just that color and this is this the watermark fine here's all the head shapes i'm going to click and drag and select just what is her head okay okay and i'm going to hit f8 which is convert this to a symbol graphic symbol is what we want movie clip symbols the main difference between graphic and movie clip symbols and there's also a button but buttons are literally buttons if you want to add interactivity and have button we're not going to add a button for someone to click something um that's not for this movie clips have their own (laughs) timelines as well um but movie clip timelines are independent of all other timelines they're not in sync with main timelines and uh, graphic does it, graphic also allows you to loop things in an analog kind of way like i showed you earlier over here mm-hmm. where movie clips to control them you need to use action script which is part of animate um so anyway let's call this head different workflow yeah now she's a symbol it's in our library just to show it's part of this document Right now, our best friend is the free transform tool. It's kind of a Swiss army 
knife of tools where it's a it, multiple tools in one you'll see that right now she just kind of hinges in the wrong place mm -hmm. when we when we select the free transform tool we get this little white dot that we can just hinge somewhere else so that's what we want yes that's a lot and, more accurate to human anatomy correct and now we're in i just double click the head we're inside the head symbol there's pardon the little artifacts up here just i didn't clean it all up but it doesn't matter because these this these colors uh, are the same as the background color it's not going to show up so everything's selected granted everything's on its own layer we don't want that so what i'm going to do is while everything's selected there's a key command command i'm on a mac command shift d is a distribute to layers function and now you'll see not only has it done that but because i was a good little boy and i named all my layers in photoshop it actually um, adopted all those layer names as well when it distributed, nice distributed them to layers. Yeah. It's kind now of we have cool. an amazing question here from Anika once again from YouTube. What benefits does Adobe Animate have over, say, After Effects or Character Animate? I feel like you're An the perfect person to ask. Annika is so good with the questions. Um, and it's a great question because the I think the biggest benefit... So... If you're coming from an After Effects world, what this nesting of la or layering of animations is not unlike pre-composing uh, pre in After Effects. So, or pre adding pre-comps, right? Nesting, uh, same thing, same technique. But what Animate has that After Effects doesn't is an amazing drawing engine. And I'll answer it just by showing you real quick before we get back to this animation, because I love the vector-based drawing tools in Animate. You have so many of them here, right? But what's great is, again, working with pressure sensitivity. Actually, white on white is not a good way to demo this. So if I grab a, de a better color, let's go darker than that. Um, there's so many great brush tools. It's really responsive and quick. I could, there's different kinds of brushes, too, uh, that feel really great. And you even have these brushes over here where you can, let me go to window, brush library, artistic, charcoal, double click, and you can create, oh, let's make that a little bit thicker. I already drew it, but I can um, mm -hmm. adjust the stroke size. Oh, cool. uh, yeah, just, just play around with those. Uh, even just the, the simple shape tools, this is what I love. I, I use Illustrator, but I find mm -hmm. sometimes that Illustrator can be a little bit trickier or it takes uh, extra clicks to do something. Let me turn off this and let's make this color. So we have this shape here, right? It's easy to just grab the selection tool and grab a point and change the shape or grab between points and change the shape or click and drag to select an area and then hit delete. And then you just change that Whoa. shape. Yeah, That's cool. this is it's like working with a ball of clay. Yeah. You're just pushing and pulling. And if you wanted to, we could change the color, make a circle, and you have another vector shape here. You can do the same thing, or you can actually do something like this, and it eats it away. And just fun. Magical, and you have, magical you have light. feeling. Yeah, exactly. It's You can draw like amazing characters uh, this way. And if you don't want that to happen in terms of like having one um shape destroy another mm -hmm. there is a tool let me find it called object drawing so let me grab the rectangle tool again i think it's j oh I, I don't want that stroke let's just turn that off and it puts it inside oh come on there it is it'll take a shape and put it in a container that kind of protects it you'll see if i double click oh, okay. it it's it's inside a drawing object this is an illustrator feature um, and if I do the same thing with this circle, you'll see now it has a bounding box around it and it won't destroy the other one. Yeah, that's so, yeah. So that's all that is. Uh, and if you want to, you can play with a union tool where they become the same thing and double click it. Or let me see if I can undo that and we could do modify uh combine objects punch so you can punch it out or whatever you can this is just the tip of the iceberg with some of these drawing tools but i i love it i think it's a great you have a gradient tool you have all these great tools so many cool options 
Thank you, Annika, for bringing us that question over from YouTube. And if you have questions, drop them in the chat. We'll be sure to answer them here while Chris works on this really cool animation. Okay, where were we at and what are we doing? <laughs> all right, now what I'm gonna do is start converting um, all of these two graphic symbols. This is okay. the lips. Here's an eye, let's call it. And this. for the eye, are you gonna make the entire eye a symbol or each part of the eye its own symbol? I think for this, each part its own symbol. I'm gonna do a lot of the animation inside of this timeline. Okay. And let's do pupil here and call it pupil one for now. I'm trying to not spend too much time with um, white and call it, I don't know, one. That's fine for now. So all of these things are now symbols except for the face and a few other things. Just bear with me. Here's an ear. I might just forego even naming them just for the sake of time. So I'm hitting F8 on the keyboard. If I wanted to, I could find it up here under modify, convert to symbol. But we're working fast here. We're working really fast just for this. I know how fast this stuff goes by. <laughs> I'm so well aware of it. I get to like I speak at Adobe Max and for one hour and Every, as soon as the hour's up, all the hands go up. Like, wait, what did you, how did you do this? How did you <laughs> well, do that? Well, we, we are like pacing super well. We still have about 50 minutes of this stream, 45. Oh, so don't worry about time. And <sighs> I love seeing how you're like, I can really tell how like comfortable you are in the software and just like <laughs> how second nature it is for you. You're just like, I don't even know what you're clicking uh, because you're using all the short keys, shortcuts, short keys. I know. Yes, oh. shortcut keys, I guess. <laughs> but no, you said it was F F eight. Uh, yes, F eight, exactly. Um, yeah, I guess I am. I, you know, after what twenty years of using this, maybe more. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> yes. Okay. So now, before we apply any kind of additional keyframes and tweens, mm -hmm. our center point. That's what we got to pay attention to. So again, okay. our best friend over here, Mr. Free Transform. Uh, I'm th this is the face symbol. I'm going to move this down to here. The By default, the center point's in the center. Great. Uh, probably fine here. The reason why we want to do this next before applying keyframes and tweens is if we create an additional keyframe somewhere down the timeline and then go into this or click on this uh, symbol, this instance of a symbol, I should say, and we move the center point, the tween gets all funky. The mathematically, it doesn't know what you want and it'll tend to drift um, out of place. And so that, that, it. okay. it's a common question on the forum, like my animations are drifting and we don't know why. And it always 90% of the time turns out that the center point is uh, different across keyframes. Okay. So if so, you set it in the beginning, you won't have this problem later down the line when you're keyframing. Correct. So I'm going to make sure everything is kind of like the ear. I want to hinge it there. Uh, the earrings, I don't think they're going to move that much, but I'm going to hinge them anyway. So you can mm -hmm. test it there. Um, and, re and in Photoshop, I had actually kind of overdrawn everything, a, a really important factor, mm -hmm. right? Because this was originally where it ended, right up against your face. So I went into that layer and overdrew it, knowing that I might want to move it even if i don't at least i have that option yeah pupils center points are fine i don't think the eyes are going to matter the whites aren't going to matter of her eyes and let me lock uh this okay this all looks pretty good to me um i don't know what is up oh this is the face layer okay let me lock that and grab i'm trying to select the eye and it's not working come here i think i have it locked somewhere yes that happens. And make sure it is. You might need a symbol. to name it. Yeah, why don't we do that? And that's her right eye, so dash right. Oh, fine. It's just a character uh in I broke the law of layer naming by using a special character. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's do a quick little save first. Don't forget to save. All right. Um, so I think we're good. The hair, I might drop it, this whole asset. Remember that? Like we Yeah. I was going to okay. ask you about the hair, what, what your plans were there, because it could move in so many ways. If you it think could. It. <laughs> and one thing we I could do, or I could go back and do, if it's not going to work out, is separate this hair like down the middle and have two halves. Right. Um, but I don't know if we'll need to. Right, we'll see. If we need to, fine. So now, remember, this is scene one. This is the bodies out here. I, could, I don't think I'm going to move the body. And all of the head 
parts are inside this symbol. And here's okay. all of those layers. So here we're going to work inside of this timeline. What I want to do in here is just make her look left and right for now. That's it. Keep it simple. So we have everything as symbols, which is great. And I am going to extend the timeline out. Let's say it maybe it'll take her a second to move her face, okay. her head to turn. It could change. We might want to make it slower or faster. We don't know until sometimes you, you apply those classic tweens. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the fun part, the moment we've been waiting for. I just start by moving stuff, right? Oh, and the one thing I hadn't done yet is create that shadow. Do we want to do that? We want to do that, right? We I think time. so. You sounded very excited about it earlier in the stream. <laughs> but you could take it back if you want. <laughs> I am so excited about a lip shadow. All right. Why not? Because here, I'll, I'll show you. Linear gradient. Uh, let's edit this. So what I'm going to do is we have our swatches. Our default swatches um, to create this gradient are black to white. I'm going to double click in here. turns into an eyedropper. Let's grab a dark part of her skin tone. And let's grab it again. But on this one, I'm going to mix the alpha transparency all the way to zero. I'm going to add this as a swatch. Done. Grab the rectangle tool. I think that's what we want. And no stroke. And let's just create this shape. All right. So now it's an object drawing, which is fine. We can still manipulate it. It's on its own layer. Everything else is locked. Okay. And so let me go back to the original just to see what it looked like. Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. So it looked like this kind of like a triangle and it ac actually helps accentuate the chin. Great. Mm -hmm. Got it. So I'm going, and you'll see some artifacting here. I was so sloppy with um, cleaning up the Photoshop file. Again, if you spent more time, um, you could make it look a lot better. So here you'll notice, right, I'm doing what I just showed earlier. Yeah. I might overextend it a little bit. Actually, what's really cool too is you can select part of it and then, you know, maybe just bend that oh, part. Move a, a little bit of the seg uh, just a segment of it. Yeah, in case we, I don't want the, I don't want this corner to become this close to it in case it, the lips move and reveal. Yeah. Again, it's like an overdrawing thing. Um, and so, and then this comes down to about here. Let's add this. And we can play with the, uh, how the gradient is in there. I'm grabbing F, which is like, the, which is, what's this thing called? Uh, gradient transform tool. And so you can actually play with the gradient to make it look Better. The direction and the yeah yeah basically just the direction, the opacity so controlled that elsewhere. Okay. So that's kind of that's not bad. Not that looks bad. cool. The perfectionist in me might actually extend it over a little bit more. Okay. And maybe make this come down a little bit more. You can even grab a section if we wanted to and just do something like this, make it mm -hmm. wider. Whatever, I'm getting a little nitpicky. So let's then... That looks good. Yeah. Lip shadow. Graphic symbol. Let's free transform tool. Let's just hinge it there. Great. Create a new keyframe at the end. And now we're going to start to move this over. Actually, I had drawn it in the second position of that lip. So let's move that there in the nose. Okay. And now we're going to start okay. animating. Finally. The stream so about animation. You're animating we're at the one second, at the one frame or one second mark? At the one second mark. And okay, I just cool. realized the free transform tool for the nose is in a weird spot. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, frame one, mm -hmm. change it. I'm going to go here, clear that keyframe. I'm right clicking over it, right? And we're right clicking and clearing it. Okay. I'm going to create, and here it is with the new location for the center point. Whoops. Got it and just click that one frame hit f6 that's going to work better now i can kind of give it a little bit of rotation or even skewing works again the free transform tool is so good for stuff like this even with uh the lips skewing can can do a lot so now let's continue in this direction let's move this over let's moving move. everything over left it, yeah the one tricky thing with um imported bitmaps with alpha it's hard to 
even though you can't see it, there is an alpha channel here that's making preventing me from selecting the white of her eye. So I'm going to lock that layer and let's move, make her look that direction as well. Perfect. Move this over and then looking lock a little it. crazy right now, but I'm sure it will all come together. It's all part of the animation process. Yes, it always looks <laughs> so ugly right before the, the very end. Now, if you imagine that these objects, her eyebrows, her eyes are wrapping around, if you want to try to instill that feel, mm -hmm. I will use the free transform tool, hold down option. And instead of this, it'll do this. So I'm imagining oh, okay. it's kind of changing the perspective of this eyebrow a little bit. Yeah. And if this eyebrow is coming closer to the front of her face, it might widen just a little bit. Again, it's just tiny little details. And let's actually move this a little bit over more. And we can sort of test it a little bit by just going back and forth. Now, if this, if her head's turning in space, this ear will actually go in the opposite direction. Right. Okay. And this might come out a little bit more, but if we, we don't want it to come out too much because it, it'll detach from her head. So I'm actually going to hold down option, free transform tool, bring this out a little bit. Okay. We're starting to get somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's, you're starting to see it come together. We can Definitely. always, yeah, we can always tweak it, make changes. The hair, I am going to skew it first and move it over a little bit more like this. It's like the, it doesn't have to be super perfect. It's just more so like the gesture of the movement. Yes. Not exactly. extremely mathematical, but I feel like you also naturally know from your years of animation experience where these things would go while maybe people who are new to this process might have to think a little bit harder about what happens when a head turns. Yes. And also knowing, uh, you know, what objects are probably closer to us than others and how they, they would yeah. move in relation to, say, the ears or the hair. Mm -hmm. uh, I, trust me, I made some horrible looking animations early on when I was kind of playing around <laughs> with this initially. Um, but, but the one big lesson I learned was that when I ever, whenever I tried to move one thing too much, it just destroyed the, um, the illusion that we're creating. Right. Uh, so it's a whole lot of tiny little motions that I found when I scaled back on stuff, then it looked better, but we haven't even gotten to the magical part yet. So right now I think we're pretty good. So I'm going to click and drag across all these layers. Let's make sure I have them all. Yes. And I'm going to go, there's this cool little create shape tween button or classic tween or motion tween classic tween is what we want. Okay. Again, we start to see everything starting to take Whoa. place. I, I feel like that. This ear almost moves too much relative to everything else. Whoops, not the head. And let's click and drag across all the layers, across right. all these spans. Let's add that easing in and easing out again to soften the way she moves. This looks okay. awesome already. I mean, I'm buying it. Right? I'm buying it too. Do you want to buy it more? So let's go yes. out to the main timeline. <laughs> Right. We have this head here. Let's uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to delete all these empty layers that we have because we converted them all. We nested them all inside that head symbol. Mm -hmm. So let's clean up our timeline. OK, and this is uh, the head itself. Let me rename this. Whoops. And so we know if we go back in here, it's the 30 frames. We know it's going to be a lot longer because mm -hmm. she's going to turn her head the opposite way. So let's go and just click and drag. I'm highlighting a huge area and I'm going to hit F5 or let's go here so you can actually see me do it and insert frames. This is kind of like extending the exposure. So what is okay. this doing? It's playing the graphic symbol that contains the animation we just created. It's set to loop by default. We can say play once and if it does, it'll stop at its last frame, which is 30. Which is 30, yeah. Yeah, the main timeline is longer, so it's just going to sit there until we tell it to do something else. I'm going to set it to loop because ultimately we want this to kind of loop in a cool way. Mm -hmm. So for now we have this, but remember what we had done before. Actually, before I, I expose that cool little trick, let's go to, let's say, I don't know, frame 70. Hit F6 and let's move everything over all the way to the other side. Okay, make her look in the opposite okay. direction. And we can even make her blink and stuff depending on time. 
But let's move this over. I might actually hit free transfer. I feel like while you, to make it move, you kind of have to shove everything over. And yeah. that process feels like you're breaking it, but really you're yeah. making it. Uh, it's such a counterintuitive process until you're at the end almost. I mean, just yeah, trust if, the you, process. if your client is over your shoulder looking at you right now, you'll be fired. Like, this is yeah. horrible. Like, what is this? <laughs> what are you doing? What you have you done anything. to the perfectly great animation we just had? We're ruined. Okay. Ruined it. Oops. So just getting it out there. Remember, we kind of skewed this just mm -hmm. to make it smaller. So let's bring that out. We're going to do the same to this option. Maybe a little bit more. It might be too much. We don't know yet. The eye and these are locked. So let's bring these over. Yeah, and this will determine, whoa, if we bring in this over too much or not enough, we don't know yet. We don't care. We're in control. Maybe See, like right up. now, that looks a little <laughs> broken, uh, Everyone, but I'm trusting you. Everybody close your eyes for the next yeah. two minutes. <laughs> or watch if you dare and learn how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the nose probably is too much here. We okay. can even, let's do... Um, holding down shift and actually let's do this let me see eyeball this is that this is that this is the white mm -hmm. okay so these three I'm gonna just try to grab all of these and maybe even rotate them just a hair a couple of pixels here and there because of That's... perspective right when you turn your head your eye would shift exactly a little bit higher up okay exactly uh, let me grab this one just a little bit more. Okay. Gareth Williams chimed in and said, you hey, don't Gareth. make it until you break it. And I think <laughs> that's exactly the motto here. And you don't fake it until you make it. No. We're on to something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> All right. And then the hair is going to do the opposite. It's okay. Gonna shift over, maybe move down. I find skewing tends to add that level of yeah, kind of that, that motion illusion. Yes. Yeah. It do, all of a sudden it's not as flat. Right. Okay. I kind of like this. Great. Yeah. And easing in and easing out. So now we got this. Whoa. I feel now like you... that came out of nowhere. One second ago it was all <laughs> broken. Now it's here fully functioning. <laughs> so you ready for this though? I don't know. Are we I ready? I am. <laughs> 70 frames. Let's make sure yeah. we're at 70 frames here or a little bit beyond that, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to for now. Whoops. Again, I fat fingered that right click thumb. Ah, I keep on doing it. I want to remove these frames. So I'm just going to go Got remove it. frames. Perfect. Here's, here's her head. And if we play back this main parent timeline, all right, we see we have a keyframe here that has the head. We get to about here where her head stops mm -hmm. we're going to create a keyframe let's create a keyframe at 70 as well now if we go here and let's say she looks this way and moves her head across the neck a little bit more and apply the same classic tween with easing like wow oh that looks so cool a lot more dynamic there right and all that is is just layering animations i'm just rotating a head symbol that's containing everything we just did inside mm -hmm. it, right? We just did that. Yeah. And then we on can do tilt. the same thing on a tilt. And I'll show you examples where um, I, I kind of take that to the extreme. Got it. But yeah. Wow. That so, was a lot faster than if I saw this animation, I would think that took days um, or hours. Uh, it at least a full to. afternoon. Right, <laughs> we right. are an hour into the stream. And uh, really, we, you only got started on this about maybe 35 minutes ago. And already you've brought this this uh, character to life. So I'm shocked. And everyone in the stream is, everyone in the chat is equally shocked. Umicorn says one moment she was flat. Another moment she's 3D. Yes. I would argue two and a half D. Uh, like we, you said earlier, but <laughs> let's we could even do something where we know she's 70 frames long uh, yeah. in the nested animation. So let's go to uh, let's make it 140. Okay. Right. And 
double. And let's go six uh, F6 here, creating a keyframe at the last frame. Mm -hmm. I think, well, I don't know if I want to do that, but whatever, we'll figure it out. Let's do this. Let's create another keyframe here. And instead of her looking up, maybe she looks down this time. Okay. Maybe we lower it a little bit more and we apply that tween, a little bit of easing. I know I'm kind of fast doing that, but I've done, oop, I don't know what happened there. What happened there? Frame picker 70, you should be at 70. Oh, you know what? I know what we hadn't done. So she gets to here, but mm -hmm. when it loops back, it's straight again. So let's right. make it loop seamlessly, my bad. So let's click and drag, copy these frames. They're all selected, right? I'm gonna hold down mm -hmm. option and I'm gonna click and drag and let's go down the timeline too. Let's make it an even 100 frames. That's easy to remember. Okay. So now we wow. apply a tween, more easing, and now she'll return to the start. To so the that'll loop Got seamlessly. It. Yeah. Let's so now see. let's go to here, but we're at 140. So what we want to do is let's go to, let's make it an even 200. Let me actually clear this frame and let's remove, oh, I don't know if we have to remove that tween yet. Let's go to, yeah, 200, hit F5 and let's go frames. to, okay. let's go to, this is frame 70, I think. Uh, no, frame 30, good. I'm clicking here, I'm clicking on the, on the, instance of the symbol frame 70 and here it's frame she's back to frame 34 because earlier it looped back too soon so i'm going to clear this frame and i am going to then create a keyframe here again this is just going to ensure when it loops back that it's seamless and so now she turns her head again what if we kind of staggered see how she stops here and then continues looking yeah. we could do something where she turns her head kind of in a staggered way across those keyframes. So in other words, I'm not creating the keyframes that exist or how they exist in the nested head. It might look a little weird. Let's not see sure. it. Okay. So she starts to rotate here, turn, stops, and then continues looking. Maybe. I buy works. it. I okay. think I buy it. Yeah. Fabiola buys it. I like it. And then comes back again, just constant motion. Yes. Window. So cool. I feel like uh you just go to loop playback. I, so yeah. I really believe that you've brought her to life. Should we make her blink? That was gonna I was gonna ask that question, but I didn't wanna throw it in there if you weren't weren't trying right. to do that today. But I would love to see that. I feel like that gives an added element of realism and I think yeah. it's a common thing that everyone wants to do with their characters. And it shows the power of nesting too, which is a, a, a huge part of it. So let's do that. And it's not that hard. Now, Chris, so before before you get started on that, we have an amazing question here from Martin on YouTube. Um, just from curiosity, what if you want to make a blink animation? Will you cut pieces <laughs> from the face in order to create? All right, so we're getting to Martin's questions. <laughs> yes. I mean, you could always go back into Photoshop and just draw those frames uh, or different eye perspectives or whatever the different frames that you think you want using yeah. photoshop tools i'm not going to do that i'm going to go straight into animate so now we have skipping skipping a backward step because i think most people would think to go back to the psd yeah and which is totally valid but mm -hmm. i'm not going to what i'm going to do is so we have this symbol which is this eye if i double click it again we have yet another timeline every symbol has its own timeline inside of this timeline we'll create the blink. And so what I like to do is create a blank keyframe, which is F7. I'm going to use this drop down blank keyframe and then turn on onion skin. Okay. That's like a okay. light, light board, light box type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I can see this previous frame. I am going to actually go back and grab that color. I can use the eyedropper even on a bitmap. It'll pick that color for me. And let's imagine, let's see how big a brush we have. It's a little too big um let's imagine the way she blinks this top lid is going to come down like that right mm -hmm. so ultimately these lashes will be more like this right down here like this and so i might even just use this as the actual art all right i trust Why you not? i feel like i feel like you haven't you're the first you've one proved us right this entire time <laughs> even with live leaving uh 
fragments, fragments. Are they called? I don't know. Can't yeah, think of the name right now. I'll, Everywhere I'll. and 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 doing a rough uh, cleanup job. Everything has worked out amazing. So I'm trusting you on this. All right, I, I best friends forever. Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. Um, and I'm gonna go back to this color. And mm -hmm. let's draw, I'm going to draw, actually, there's a great, when the brush tool is selected, you have all of these modes, paint normal, paint fills, paint behind, selection, paint inside, yada, yada, paint behind. And that way I can actually fill in this whole entire eye. In fact, I might even go as far up as this. Okay. So right? that maybe it's a little bit more believable. Yeah. It's the whole eyelid. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know what I don't like is I want to have this be a little bit more of the lashes perfect like chris amazing makeup artist so <laughs> add it to my resume yep add it totally okay. believable all right turn off this what i want to do too is let's go to the my color um panel select mm -hmm. radial and i'm going to double click in here i'm going to just grab some of this color and grab some of that lightest color in there turn off that and let's actually reverse those two colors. You can see a little okay. preview in there. Mm -hmm. And okay, great. Go back. Let's add that as a swatch. Go to the second keyframe and fill this in with that gradient. Mm -hmm. Hit this gradient fill uh, edit tool. I can edit it rotate to the shape. it. Yeah, I can do this. I can do this and even off center it a little mm -hmm. bit just to make it a little more believable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not bad. One thing I want to do because that's just two frames. Let's do one more quick thing. Okay. I'm going to show with onion skin, the two different frames that we mm -hmm. just created that we like grab that color again. And let's do an in between just an in between frame. So somewhere along sort of this axis. Mm -hmm. So let's do, um, let's literally, I should just kept that line. Let's do this and maybe something more like this. Again, this yeah, is cause it's catching the wind as it goes down Whew. movement of those lashes. Yep. And also it's just 30 frames per second. And this is just one frame. It's okay. one thirtieth of a second. So no one's going to see any mistakes or weird little detail. Um, and if they trust do, the timeline, trust the timeline <laughs> all uh, right let's see that's that's um that's gonna be a, a, a t-shirt i think that's a pin that's, in the making yes actually what i'm gonna do i created a second layer i'm gonna lock okay. this layer i'm gonna create some blank keyframes i want to paste in place the eye this lid from that frame mm -hmm. so i can actually just erase this got it okay and maybe while we're here and we're going to be a little particular, let's just change that. So now we got our blinking. Okay. That's fine. That looks that's pretty blink. cool. Now, because graphic symbols are blinking or looping, I should say by default, we mm -hmm. kind of have a little bit of a problem we need to just correct. And it's not that hard. I'm going to go here. So otherwise she'll, she'll blink too much is the yeah. problem that we have. She's right? a little too flirty and we don't got want it. that. Yeah. And, or she has uh, an affliction or something, or a little, <laughs> a, a tick. Um, which is fine. so it was just fine. Nothing wrong with that, <laughs> but let's, let's get a little more natural. So we're going to go here. We're going to click on um, single frame, the okay. property for the instance of this symbol. So, yeah, but when we get to this next keyframe, it's going to start looping again. So okay. let's just go to all of these, um, keyframes. We haven't done the other eye yet. I know we haven't done it. I totally get that, but we're going to show you an easy way to do it. So where okay. do we want to have her blink? Let's have her blink somewhere right before she turns right after Maybe you tell right me after. i'm guessing let's do uh let's do like yeah i don't know anywhere let's have her do uh right here frame 70 and we'll just say play once so now when she gets to frame 70 oh you know what i forgot to <laughs> play do play twice <laughs> no what i forgot the to do reverse. We, we could have it play in reverse but i'm gonna just because then you have to create another keyframe on the parent timeline whatever i'm just gonna do this let's select them all Hold down option, duplicate them all. I'm actually gonna go one more frame, maybe have her eye closed for two frames, right? Okay. And then I'm gonna select these. I'm going to right click, woo, and say reverse frames. Reverse frames. Okay. And then that's it. And now it'll play once. 
So she blinks when it gets to that. Got key it. Thing. Okay. Okay. So while we're here, why don't we actually let's go here, double click. I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, let's paste what we have. Oh, <laughs> wrong one. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you, you're going to find out. I thought I okay. had copied these. I almost gave up a like a secret surprise in the last five minutes. Yeah. No, I'm. You're now really. I'm concerned. curious now. <laughs> No, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. Um, Be very. Annika afraid. says that that creeped that creeped her out, and I think we can all agree the single blink was uh, threatening. Yes. Again, everything <laughs> looks horrible right up until the very end, and it turns beautiful. So okay. we we have the I copied the frames from the wrong eye right into this eye. I just want to save some time. I'm going yeah. to go to this button here, which is Edit Multiple Frames, and this original eye layer is locked. I don't want to edit it with all and this works like onion skinning in the sense mm -hmm. where you have these brackets on either side of the playhead as long as it spans the layers you want these little brackets here you can see them um, everything is selected I'm going to hit command a just in case I'm going to go up to modify transform and then say flip uh, horizontally genius so now I'm going to remove the first frame or at okay. least the contents of it, because mm -hmm. here's our original eye. It might be a little bit different than that one and just have it uh, play out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and then just reverse, reverse these. It. Okay, so now we have Annika, don't look. Uh, we have <laughs> to go and fix all this stuff and okay. just set it. Play once. Oh, this is the one, where does she? Yes, let's play once on this frame. Wait, where does she? Um... Now, now her eyes are blinking off. Oh, independently of each other. Wait, why is that? Let's do so. She starts blinking on frame two. Why does okay. she? Why, why, why? There's just a go. little setting, I'm sure. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. Gorgeous. Let's bring this back. Extra frame in there, maybe? Yep. Or n lack of an extra frame. Oh, got it. Okay, good. And then I got to turn off, make sure this is at single frame here. Okay, fine. Done whoa that looks crazy good and the blinking works um could you expand the the play the graphics so we can see it a little bit bigger yes let's do f4 and big Bam. yeah so we can so, see it in all its glory it looks so good and the blinking is super believable so like how I didn't spend that long. Imagine if you spent another hour or two on this, like really yeah. made it polished up and just like, yeah, you could but do this it is so great, much more. Especially for like a proof of concept. Like, look, this is how this character would move. This is what it would look like in space. This is such a cool way to explore that without getting caught up in the weeds. And I think that's a super cool, like seeing you work so fast and not be um, super detailed is actually quite inspiring because you can show how much you can do if you just focus on the big picture exactly so uh, on a similar note like this is done in a similar way in terms of layering animations but mm -hmm. also combining the tweening the classic tweening and the easing with actual frame by frame oh, animation okay so if i were to go inside this here's the symbol that contains all of these parts and again nothing is moving I'm not doing crazy levels of animation. I'm just doing lots of little subtle motions with tweens. Mm -hmm. These orange tweens are shape tweens. I'm actually, you know, taking vector shapes and shape tweening them using masks and stuff like that. So her head, if I double click her head, when it was when it was straight up and down, I just did it the same way we did the previous character, right? Just moving mm -hmm. things across the actual part of her hair that looks like a, a split. It's just a triangular shape to give you the illusion that it's actually yeah. a part in her hair, but it's not. And so when I take that and I rotate it this way, it looks mm -hmm. like, again, more of a 3D type of thing. The hand, let me just hide this annoying little mask shape. This is literally just, if I click on here, it's just a frame by frame animation of her, when her hand comes up out of the water. Um, so so that, cool. I like to live in that sort of world where I'm not doing anything amazing it's just a lot of little simple things and how they work in relation to each other i would say that's pretty amazing chris i feel like <laughs> Thank you. you know even though it's small mm, animations it still has a really really big impact so just seeing this come together has been amazing 
We have about 12 minutes left on oh. this stream, Chris. What okay. else can you show us here? You have so many animation examples. So are there lot. any other little tips and tricks that you like to use when you're working in animate? Oh my goodness, so many. Uh, I'm trying to think if I... Um, here's another one. Again, it's a lot of the same stuff. But in terms of tips and tricks... <laughs> That is a lot of them right there, honestly. That's a lot of them. But I, I like to pay attention to the details. So yeah. let's let's let me see if I can find. Um, okay, let's do. I'm gonna open up this. This is Surprise! one of yours. This is one of yours. Yes, for anyone watching right now, this is an illustration I made over on my Instagram. Yep. And Chris and I have not discussed. This is a full on nope. surprise right now. I nope. am shocked to see myself on screen right now. I'm taking a risk. I am <laughs> stealing your work. Um, I thought like this is such a fun, great image. And I thought like, why don't we just sort of try to animate this? And then I think we should even share it to social media because there's a great little feature here built into Adobe Animate. Cool. Let's do it. So I actually started taking your image and mm -hmm. brought it into Animate. I even gave it the sort of this little squiggle look. Yeah, right? which I love. So if I, I'll show you how I did that. So here's the original image. Okay. Right? And then what I did was I'm going to go and insert a couple of frames. I'm do you can see I'm animating on every other frame. So to mm -hmm. make it not as smooth, because I like the sort of choppiness of it, hit F6. And now I could even hit F7 and turn on onion skin and redraw it. And, and just the human right. imperfections of your hand would make it sort of oscillate and squiggle mm -hmm. or that boiling line is what they call it technically. Yeah. But sometimes, again, if you want to work quick, I'll select it this, in the second keyframe. You can select the art, right? Selecting everything. And you have this little okay. smooth button down here under shape options. And if I click it, it just smooths out the vectors a little bit, which creates that sort of oscillating motion. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically you're taking the original and then adding a smooth layer to give it that. Yeah, I did that like glitchiness little. Yeah, just just make it like perky per, or yeah. weird and uh, yeah. imperfect, I should say. Which so, is what I like. Yeah, and I love that because I I feel like I get too perfect with my art sometimes. So I totally mm -hmm. love when things are when they can feel like more hand drawn, and then I just took certain aspects of it and like your typography mm -hmm. and separated it and created turned them into symbols, graphic symbols. You can see cool. how it's it's told to play once, and I thought like all right in the last few minutes let's take uh, I don't know if I'll have time to finish this, but I started taking. Uh, this word apart, like actually finishing where they overlap, kind of like we mm -hmm. did with the girl in Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, here's the rest of it. So if I were to continue on, it's just a case of using the last, oop, wrong layer, thank you. Using the lasso tool, and this might take a little too long, and then copying it and creating a new layer, pasting in place, and going back in and cleaning it up right cleaning it okay eraser tool again these are all mm -hmm. vectors i trace bit there's a cool um like live trace or bitmap image trace inside of animate as well so you can bring in things that aren't vector and make them vector so let's make oh, this a fill let's drop that brush size down make it a little bigger the forward um brackets and uh or in Photoshop are the same in Animate for changing the brush size. So let's do something like this. Grab that color. Uh, I have, oh, object drawing mode turned on and fill that in. Maybe we take this, paint that. This is fascinating to watch. Oops, uh, what am I doing? Oh, for some reason it doesn't like when I try to fill it in. Fine, be that way. Um, okay, and so here's the R. I might, oh, I see why. Object drawing mode is still on. Sometimes when it is, it can cause more problems. Oh, That's okay. okay. All right, so now we got work. So you get the idea. So now what, mm -hmm. if I were to animate this, let's say I did it to all the layers. I'm not gonna do it to all the layers. I can take this and maybe let's say, actually, let's do this. Let's go to 10 and let's go hit F6, go back to the beginning. Again, a lot of times, I like to work with a finished image and then it's easier to kind of deconstruct it in reverse to animate it. So I'm going to make it them really small. Oh, this one is not a symbol yet. 
now it is. You edited it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me make sure I clear that. So it's a symbol in the next keyframe as well, or else this won't work. And select all these frames, create that tween. So it go, it scales. The, the, the classic tween will scale different properties or tween different properties, I should say, whether it's scaling, uh, position, alpha, color, whatever. So, or all of the above, if you happen to do all that. So let's actually go classic ease, cubic out. So it kind of goes whoop, like that. And maybe it even overshoots the scale and each of these gets a little bit bigger before it settles back down. Ooh, so it has like this bounce effect. Correct. Oops, I don't want that button. Sometimes I hit the wrong button because I go too fast. And I'm gonna do a little bit of easing in and out. So let's turn that off so you can see. Now what's cool is that that's the W, that's the R. So let's take these and move them down and take this, move that down. Let's go hit F5, insert frames, and then here will be the rest of it. Uh, let's go. I'm just. Cool. Let's pre pretend we did all that. So now we go back yeah. out here. We say, you know what? Just play once and it's nested. We want it to show up a little bit later. I'm on the parent timeline. Maybe not that late. We can play with the timing. You become a video editor at this point. Totally. So that happens. That happens. You are worthy, always, and loved. I, I am blown away. I love seeing, obviously, illustrations come to life. But of course, I'm delighted to see my illustration come to life, Chris. This was so cool. You showed us so much. So we're going to um, let's share it. Let's share it. Really yeah, fast. let's share it. We have like five yeah. minutes on the stream. So show us how to, how to how you would go about sharing this. Here, let me let me go back. Let me go back. So this button up here, hit that button and then click the social share button. I'm going to choose Twitter. Okay. And let's go with, um, what should we say? What should we say? Had a great time. Did I spell that right? No. On Adobe Live with Fabiola. No, it's Fabiola. F-A-B-I-O. Whoops. O-L-I-T-A draws. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited to see this tweet. This is all, this is so cool. You guys, you gotta, gotta go follow Chris over on Twitter. Yeah. So that's, uh, so now that's all it's doing. It's, it's, um, rendering it, it's publishing it. And if we go to Twitter and we go to my page, hold on, I'll tell you when it's there. We'll wait for it. I mean, it's doing a lot of work right now. Yeah, but it does it pretty quickly. Yeah. I have to say. And no, not yet. For now, not. But any second now, I'm sure it'll come through. Yeah, yet. Come on, you can do it. But this was there. It is. There it is. That is so neat. So how fast was that? That was like that, super quick. That was so quick. I mean, this whole process was so quick, and I love how you incorporated firefly as well as animate as well as the social feature photoshop i feel like you took us through so many different kind of parts of the process but you cool. were also so fast and so many folks over in the chat were loving how fast it was because i think you know they were able to really like quickly capture everything that was going on and you just showed us really the power of adobe animate and a lot of folks in the chat were also so excited to see uh, Adobe Animate getting some love because, you know, a lot of people use different different apps to animate. There's so many options out there and you're just right. showing us a whole new fresh, fresh uh, element. Cool. Now, can we go back? We have. Uh, yes. I just want to end on your uh, character animation. Just play it through if you can. How about we do which one? The, oh, the one with the girl. The one we just worked on. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. I just want time. folks to to see that one one last time here before we log off. I feel like this was such a win. We had so many doubts, so many doubts while uh, shifting her her face while drawing those eyelashes, and you really pulled it all together, Chris. So I can't thank you enough for that. That was so so neat to watch in real time. <laughs> I feel like you also love to use Firefly. I feel like you've been playing with Firefly and animations yeah. because Firefly is not uh, necessarily animating these things for you, but you're right. taking the the images that it 
generates and then adding your own creative element, which is so impactful. Yeah, Firefly is such a great tool for, even if you have, like you can no longer have artist block with, with something like Firefly. It's, it, it creates images I otherwise would have never thought of or created. So it's yeah, like that orange thing. tabby cat today that you, yes. al you also animated. Yeah. Uh, so don't forget that one too. All yeah. right. Well, once again, Chris, thank you so much for sharing your workflow with us and teaching us so much about animating in Adobe Animate and Photoshop. Today, you showed us how to use Adobe Firefly to generate images, how to animate a character in Adobe Animate, and how to share that animation directly to social media. So I'm sure everyone learned so much from this stream. If you want to stay up to date with Chris's work, go follow him over on Behance and over on his Twitter at Keyframer. Don't, uh, don't miss out on all the awesome content he shares over there. And if you need even more help with motion graphics after today's stream, join Evan and join Evan Abrams and Kyle Hamrick on a new episode of Motion Design Hotline. This week, Kyle and Evan explore transforming these precious prints into moving masterpieces. Thanks again, Chris, for this amazing session. This was awesome. Thank you, Fabiola. Thank you, Adobe Live. Thank you, everyone who attended. This was so much fun. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Have an amazing day. See you next. Thank you.